DMZ Season 3 is almost everything we wanted. It seems the developers have been listening to feedback over the last few months, because features like a workbench for contraband weapons, a bartering system, new bosses, a new faction with new missions, and even new backpacks are coming very soon. I've got all the details to cover off on DMZ Season 3 in this video, so make sure you smash that like button if you're excited for what's coming, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as well. We're less than 3,000 subscribers away from 900,000 now, so it'd be awesome if you could help us get there, and I'll be posting a ton of Season 3 videos and streams when it goes live next week. Right then, let's dig into this. We'll start off with the workbench. Some of you might actually remember, all the way back at COD Next last year, during the Warzone 2 gameplay showcase, the first time we got to see the game, buy stations had the option to purchase attachments for your weapons. Now, the feature was disabled, you couldn't actually use it, but it seems that the feature has now been fully integrated into DMZ for Season 3. These workbenches can be found near buy stations on the map, and for a small fee, you'll be able to add or remove attachments from collected contraband weapons. This means if you kill an enemy operator and you take their gun, but you don't quite like the loadout that they're running on the weapon, you can head over to the workbench, you can remove the attachments that you don't like, and you can add ones that you do, or ones that end up suiting the weapon more to your playstyle or just more for that situation that you find yourself in. This also means that any contraband weapons that you have in your stash are going to become a lot more valuable to you. Right now, I've got about 15 weapons stashed with various setups on them, and I know I can just throw those on into my loadout if I don't have an insured weapon slot, but I don't really care about the contraband weapons, not as much as taking my own insured weapon in. But in Season 3, you're now going to be able to take those, infill with them, take them over to a workbench, and then customize them and create new loadouts that you're much more comfortable using. It could be as simple as just switching an optic for another one that you prefer, or it could be a full weapon strip down and rebuild completely. But you're going to be able to do what you want to do with contraband weapons from Season 3 onwards in DMZ. And that is quite exciting because they've been completely static for the first two seasons, and this is one of the biggest pieces of feedback that we've seen, being able to edit our contraband weapons. We've now got that feature. Now, any of the attachments that you have unlocked for a weapon, they're going to be available for addition via the workbench. So if you're lagging behind on some of your gun ranks and you haven't got attachments available for all of the weapons, well, now's the time to maybe hop into multiplayer and grind out some of those attachments. So you're going to have access to everything at the workbenches. And another added element to this, suddenly the cash that you collect around the map from looting or selling items at buy stations or completing contracts, that cash is far more valuable than what it was before. You've got another direct reason to actually collect and hold on to cash later and later into matches, since you might find yourself near a workbench to make changes to a contraband weapon that you're using. And you're not just hoarding money to maybe extract and maybe get a little bit of a cooldown kicked off of your insured weapon slots. This, to me, is a fantastic new feature for DMZ. It fits directly into that looting, scavenging, surviving gameplay loop that's been feeling a little bit weak recently with all of the PvP that's been going on. It's quite an impactful change, and I expect we're going to see a lot more operators running around with contraband weapons in Season 3. Next up on the list for Season 3 features is the bartering system, which is taking an existing element of DMZ and is adding a little bit of new life into it. For a while now, players have been asking for some kind of trading system for the mode, which would allow players to swap items they've looted in the DMZ for other, more valuable bits of gear. And that's kind of what we're getting here, but perhaps it's not being implemented in the way that we thought that it would be. In Season 3, buy stations all around the map will, instead of just listing items for sale for cash, will list items available for trade as well. According to the Activision blog, the trading station may not have exactly what you want, but it will always have what you need. Now, many players have been asking for this trading system or like a market outside of gameplay in the menus. We're not getting that here. All of the trading is going to be done in game. But that does mean that all of those useless items that are currently lootable in the DMZ, things like soothing hand cream, toothpaste, a picture of a man, you know what I'm talking about, all those seemingly insignificant items suddenly become a bit more valuable and could be items that you could use to trade at buy stations. Does this satisfy the fix for a proper market trading system in DMZ? I don't think so. I still think there needs to be something out of the game. But we're going to talk about that now because there's been a big development there for people who wanted more of a stash outside of gameplay. 
That expanded stash is coming in the form of active duty operator slots. It's a direct solution to player feedback asking for more stash space for those valuable items that you need pretty much all the time, like three plate vests, durable gas masks, large bags, kill streaks, and even more. At the launch of Season 3, we're all going to move on from just having one operator on the screen, and instead we'll have access to three active duty operator slots. This image here shows what that menu is going to look like. This means that you'll have three separate operators for DMZ that you can choose from, all of which have their own on-soldier items. So each of these operator slots will include a backpack, a kill streak, a plate vest, a gas mask, and a self-revive. And for each round of DMZ that you play, you can choose one of these to infill with. The menu also shows the extraction streak of each operator slot and what rarity of dog tag you have with each. So that'll be bronze, silver, gold, or Damascus. So this means you now have several different operator loadout options for DMZ. So maybe you gear up one of your slots with a durable gas mask, a self-revive, a UAV, and a three-play, a large bag. You're kitted to the teeth and you save that for your bigger mission runs. And then maybe you've got another slot with only a two plate and a large bag so that you can go in and just focus on looting as much as you can with that large bag. Not worry about the fact that you've got a three plate on you because you've only got a two plate. And if you die, maybe it doesn't matter so much because then when you come back to the menu, you've still got your other operators with all of that more valuable gear attached to them. The amount of times that I've seen people leaving comments on my videos, on my live streams, asking for more space to store extra three plates or self revives, well, this new feature pretty much solves that. We now have an opportunity to gear up multiple operators, exfil with them, and then save those on soldier items on those slots for another round in the future, which is awesome. It means that I don't have to go in and risk my best gear every single time anymore because I could take another operator slot that I've put less valuable items on. This is a great new feature, and I can't wait to get started with it. And there's actually something else that ties into it, another new feature for Season 3, the new Secure Supplies Contract. This is going to flag up containers across the map that you need to go and capture, and inside those containers will be essential loot for your operator. Basically, this is a brand new way to regain after maybe a previous match in the DMZ where you didn't extract. So this could work really well with a blank operator slot, filling it up, ready for an exfil, saving all of those fresh items. Moving on to two new bosses coming in Season 3 of DMZ. One of them you can see here in this screenshot. We believe this is the previous leaked boss called Pyro. A few explosive canisters are attached to them there, some dynamite sticks in a bag hanging off of them, and a riot shield. So one Semtex should sort him out? I'm kidding, it probably won't. No idea what the other boss is going to be yet, but the blog post teases that there's going to be some kind of new underground location on Al Masra. Sounds pretty exciting. So once we get more information on that specifically, which should be next week, I will update all of you. And there's also the announcement of brand new backpacks coming to DMZ, along with new plate carrier options. You might have seen the announcement that is more focused towards Warzone 2 BR, but the tempered plate carriers from Warzone 1 are being added back in. As I said, this is a Warzone 1 feature. It condensed down your plate carrier from three plates of 50 HP each to two plates of 75 HP each. That meant that you could replate quicker and get back into the gunfight. Supposedly, these are coming to DMZ as well, which means we should get some really nice variety in looting, which is pretty awesome. But of course, brand new backpacks, guys. I spoke about this about three months ago and said, wouldn't it be cool instead of just having a no backpack, a medium backpack and a large one, that there were different shapes and sizes of backpacks that maybe you could carry more of certain items. So maybe like a rifle bag where you could carry three large sniper rifles in it, but only had like three or four slots for loot and things like that. If that's the kind of route they're going down here, that's going to be awesome. The only thing we really have is the image on the roadmap, which doesn't give us any information whatsoever. But again, we are going to learn more about that next week in another blog post specifically for DMZ. So stay tuned to the channel. I'll bring you a video on that next week. And lastly, but certainly by no means least, we are getting a brand new fifth faction for DMZ called Redacted Special Operations. This will go live when the season kicks off with all new missions to complete. Three tiers of missions are going to go live at the season launch and then tiers four and five are going to go live mid-season. So there will be this split in the rollout and that's likely to make sure people don't feel overwhelmed now having potentially five different factions to complete missions for 
if you own Modern Warfare 2, because if you don't own Modern Warfare 2, you don't get access to Crown. This new faction will be available for everybody. This is great news for me, though, because I'm just about to hit Tier 5 across all four of the factions already, so I do need some new stuff to work on. Now, I know that's a lot of information to take in, and once it all goes live in Season 3, we're going to have a lot more to think about each match that we play, but in my opinion, that is exactly what DMZ needs. We need rounds to matter more. The cash you collected needed more meaning. The contraband weapons needed more value. The operator integration needed depth and fleshing out. We asked for trading, and we sort of got it. Season 3 for DMZ is almost exactly what we wanted on paper. Now we just have to wait and see if it all turns out to be good for the game mode. Now make sure you go and watch this video, a crazy extraction from the DMZ with myself and Stodd. You just don't get these moments anywhere else.